In the first half of World War II, the Zero dominates, flying circles around Allied planes. There's about five of these in the, uh, in the world that are flying today. Mark Murphy restores and flies vintage Zeros. The greatest strengths that the Zero has by far is its agility. It's a light airplane. This airframe is one of the thinnest of any of the combat airplanes. That light airframe gives Zero pilots superior speed and handling. It just goes like it's got a rocket engine on it. It's climbing and climbing, and the angle is so steep. The Zero rolls and loops easily, so it can dodge bullets and deliver them. And it was a deadly combination for the Japanese pilots. The Zero twists its way into the American psyche after the attack at Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941. As the sun rises in Hawaii, Japan prepares to strike. Japan plans a knockout blow on the American fleet at Pearl Harbor. Around 8 a.m., planes rumble in the distance, hints of a gathering storm. So Admiral Yamamoto has been planning the Hawaii strike for almost a year. He's put together a force of six aircraft carriers, over 400 planes, and all the support Navy ships in order to launch a massive strike. Key in the carnage, 80 Japanese Zeros. They follow bombers, adding insult to injury. It's up to the Zeros to shoot down any American planes unlucky enough to take to the air. But the Zeros have another mission, and that is to use their 20 millimeter cannons to strafe. They strafe crewmen on the decks of the battleships, they strafe Hickam Field, they strafe aircraft on the ground. The Zeros, with their guns, are spreading death and destruction all across Pearl Harbor and Fort Island. With the Zero, Japan wins a shocking victory, devastating the U.S. fleet in the Pacific. For the Japanese pilots, the takeaway is confidence. They've won a huge victory. The planning has paid off, and they've seen great success, and the Zero has paid off big. It's a wonderful attack platform with its 20 millimeter guns. The attack is also a huge blow to American morale, proving Japan's fighters are far more advanced. No way are America's aviators ready for this war. Both the Army and the Navy are only beginning to get the types of planes that they'll need. Their planes are no match for the Zero. They're too slow, too heavy, and undergunned. After Pearl Harbor, the Zero clinches victory after victory in the Pacific. The reputation of the Zero is at an all-time high by the middle of 1942. America's Navy aviators know that they're up against a very formidable aircraft. They'll have to use special tactics, do the best with their gunnery, and get a little bit lucky to take on the Zero. In early 1942, the Zero is the pinnacle of fighter technology, making it the perfect starting point for our top 10 planes of the war.